and welcome to Thursday. Today's video is going to be a little bit different because we are doing a market prep video. So things are looking a little different than they typically do. My craft room is kind of a mess right now, but that's okay. We're preparing, we're prepping. It doesn't need to be super tidy. We got the mom bun going on no makeup, comfy shirts. It's just a more kind of casual day today while I prepare for my newest craft show, craft market, craft fair, whatever you want to call it. I sign up for all of my shows a year before they actually happen and that ensures that I have enough time to prepare and I don't become too stressed to be prepared and have enough inventory. This one is different however because I have exactly one week to prepare one week. <laughs> the main reason I'm not going to be freaking out about this show coming up in one week <laughs> is because it is teeny, 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 tiny. Most craft shows that I do, there's like 300 vendors with sometimes three to four buildings all on the same complex of people selling. And so those are pretty massive shows that I do and they're very successful. This one, I would be surprised if there's going to be more than eight people selling. It is at a local tabletop and RPG game store, so it's going to be very small since it is taking place at a game store, and I feel like most of the people coming to this craft show are going to be just there looking at tabletop games and RPG games and miniatures. They are doing a Pokemon trading card game event there that day as well. So there will be people there playing Pokemon. So all of my inventory is going to be focused on that crowd. So yeah, that is my main focus, especially the Pokemon. I want some Pokemon offerings for those that are there playing Pokemon. Okay, so it is time to start crocheting this morning. My kiddo does have school this afternoon, so we'll focus on that. I do also have a Twitch stream this afternoon, so that'll be interesting. And then the rest of the day is going to be focused on making Junimos and Junimo dice bags. So if you don't know what a Junimo is, they are from the game Stardew Valley. It is a PC game. You can play it on your Switch. You can play it on your phone, your iPad. It's amazing. It is a super popular farming simulating game. It's so cute. I highly recommend you check out Stardew Valley if you like cozy games. It is so fun. But this is kind of like a little forest sprite. It's like a little spirit thing. And they're just so cute. And I thought they would be really fun to make in chenille yarn. But then I'm also making a bunch of Junimos that are bags so people can put their dice or their goodies and things in. So that is what I'm focused on today. Yeah, let's get to preparing for this craft show. Okay, so I have my table kind of set up in my craft room here. It's a five foot table. Normally I like to use a six foot table, but I think the five foot table is going to be just fine. That's what this morning is going to be, just kind of figuring out how much I have already and then just kind of laying it out on the table and figuring out what I'm bringing and what I'm not bringing. So this is just kind of what we're working with right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and put all of the things that I have made this week onto the table because I know those are the things I wanna bring. Those are the things that I think are going to sell well at this particular market. So then we'll just fill in the spaces from there with everything else that I do have.
Okay, so now that I have it all set up for what I think is a really good kind of display for kind of a smaller fair, I'm gonna go ahead and really start focusing on filling up this section here with all of the items that I think are going to sell well at a game store. We have lots of dice bags going. I need more Pokemon stuff and more just kind of overall nerdy game related Amis, I think are what my main focus is. And then over the next couple of days, once I'm done crocheting, we will fill in all of the space with everything else that I have to make sure that I have, you know, a lot of stuff to bring. Everything is kind of crazy behind me. You can see um, my table all set up. That's for my cricket class that's tomorrow. Um, it's now Tuesday and we're getting there. We're getting a couple of things done. I haven't like finished a project yet that is like completely finished. I've gotten like far with a lot of projects and mostly finished them if that makes sense. So for example, here we have our little oddish bag. I was able to finish all of the crochet. I put the drawstring on there. I did put like a little um, bead, which I thought would be nice to kind of keep everything cinched and closed. This is kind of like where I'm at. I have a lot of projects that are mostly finished and I just have to do all of the little like you know, the eyes and or add legs to like my Junimo dice bags and things like that. So just a lot of like last minute things. So for example, I made these Pokeball coasters, which are super cute. I'll be sure to link that pattern down below, but I have to weave in all my ends. So it's a lot of that stuff where the crocheting is done. It's just, I need to finish them up, which I'm not too worried about. We'll get it done, right? And whatever we don't get done, guess what? It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah, so the plan for today, I do have a Twitch stream today, so I'm getting ready to fire that up. And yeah, I'm gonna make some little tiny Pokemon today on the Twitch stream. And then no more streams for the rest of the week. The rest of the week, um, it's my kiddo's last week of school, so it's gonna be kind of a little bit more relaxed around here. And yeah, just kind of finishing up everything that we need to get done. So. Let's have that stream and let's see what I can get finished today. Okay, so it's Wednesday and I am so pleased with my progress today, my productivity today, goodness gracious. So today I was able to get all of my Eevee prints made. I was able to make my um, Eevee stickers. So I did wanna do a new print for this market. And again, 
Pokemon game store. We went with Eevee holding the D20, which I think is super cute. Um, I did the sign. You guys watched me do that. I placed it way too low at first. So then I put this little thing on top, which I think looks really nice. The little flower decoration. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily match my branding perfectly, but it's still cute. Um, and it's a little crooked, but you know what? Eh. I doubt anybody's going to notice. Um, I was able then to use my Cricut. Since my Cricut was up and going, I was able to work some more on the Junimo bags. So I cut out the felt for the eyes and the blush. In the pattern, they recommend you use safety eyes, but I didn't want to do that because if you're going to put your dice in there, I don't know, dice can get really expensive. And especially if it's really special to you, you don't want anything scratching up your dice. So I decided to go with felt eyes. I cut these ones out first. I realized those were way too big for a Junimo. Um, I didn't like them. So then I made these ones, which are, I think, too small. I wish I had something in the middle, but it is what it is. It's good enough. And then I did the little blush, so that's good. We were able to finish up our Oddish, and I'm obsessed with Oddish. Wow. I think Oddish turned out fantastic. And lastly, I was able to prep for my cricket class, which is tonight. I was able to get dinner all prepped and ready to go. That way, when I pick my kiddo up from school, I can pop it in the oven. Then I can go to my library and do my cricket class. And when I get home this evening, I can then work a little bit more on crochet. And here we are. It is Friday morning and I didn't get a lot more accomplished. You know, it's just been so busy this past week with the kiddos last day of school, my cricket class, just everything. But I was able to make a couple more things. But since it is Friday, I want everything to be packaged up and ready to go this afternoon. That way I can just relax this evening and be ready to go get some good rest and not be stressed about it. So we're gonna go ahead and work on just filling up this space then that I have left over with Amis that I already have. Yeah, that's the plan today. Just start filling in the space. And if I do have time to crochet, what I will be making is more of these little quick and fast Pokemon. That's really all I have scheduled. So there are things I wasn't able to get done, but that happens every craft market. I never get overwhelmed or upset about it. I just know, okay, didn't get that done. No big deal. I still have a lot of stuff that I'm going to sell. Still have a lot of stuff that I'm going to bring with me and it's all going to be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of my table all set up. I then need to tag and credit all of the designers for their patterns and then we'll start throwing everything back into totes and be prepared for tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, so it is now the Thursday after my market. Okay, so the market was over Memorial Day weekend. And then once it was over, I really just wanted to take the time to have some quality family time. And I didn't really want to think about crocheting for a couple of days. So that's why we're doing the wrap up now. So we're almost a week later, but I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my overall experience, what I think I'm going to change when it comes to my October market, as well as the things that I'm going going to keep the same. Overall, Saturday was a great day. I would say it was a success. There were a couple more people there selling than I thought there was going to, but again, it was a very small type of market, but it was exactly what I expected it to be. Whenever I do a fair or a market or anything like that, I always set up three different goals. I have the base minimum goal. So that is the goal that I would need to make to make sure the day was worth it, to meet my space fee that I was charged, and the amount that if I were to walk away, I would say, okay, the day was a success. Then I have a middle of the road goal, which is what I usually expect to hit. Based off of previous sales and things along those lines, I do set up that goal, and it's a realistic goal of what the day should be be like. And then I have my high end goal, which is the goal where if I met that, that's excellent. And I'm taking everybody out to dinner because we had a really awesome day and I just am over the moon with the success. 
So going into this market, I did set myself a middle of the road goal and that's what I hit. I think I was $20 over my middle of the road goal. So it was definitely worth my time. It was definitely an amazing experience. I got to meet some wonderful local crafters that I had never met before. And what I really liked about this market is I feel like the customers are definitely people more in line with me as a person, if that makes sense. Sure, the craft fairs that I do where you have, you know, two to 300 vendors are fun and you meet so many amazing people, but having a small show in a game store with people that have so many of the similar kind of interests and hobbies that I do was just super awesome. And I felt like I connected more with some of those customers because we had some of the same interests. So let me go ahead and talk about what did sell this market and what didn't sell this market. So every market is completely different. Going into it, sometimes some things sell better than others and I never know what it's going to be. I had a feeling that it was gonna be my artwork and my art prints that would sell better at this market and not so much amigurumi, but it was the exact opposite. I only sold one notebook and a couple of stickers. I didn't sell a single print, which is totally fine, but it was a little surprising because I did think people would be more interested in those. People did like them and they enjoyed looking at them, but they just didn't sell which means my amigurumi is what really sold and what really caught the eyes of everybody. Now I can't go over every single pattern that I had available for sale, but I did wanna go ahead and talk about the specific patterns that I made just for this craft market and whether they sold or they didn't sell. Now, I really wanted to have filmed more of the crochet good offerings that I wanted, but to be honest, I was so pressed for time when it came to the market, I just didn't feel like filming either. And so a lot of the patterns you're going to see are actually not the ones that I crocheted, they're just the pattern pictures from Etsy or wherever. First off, I made a Kirby donut and it was really cute, but nobody cared one person did recognize it was kirby maybe other people did but just you know didn't care for it whatever no big deal my kiddo loved that amigurumi so she'll probably inherit that one i also did make two stuffed junimos from stardew valley and nobody really cared about those either so <laughs> that's okay i thought that those would be a little bit more popular but whatever now i have a couple of junimos for october which maybe they'll shine there i did make some junimo dice bags and i did sell one of them which was a yellow one which was really cute and that was actually sold to somebody who was getting it for their friend who just recently started playing stardew valley and loved junimo so the junimo dice bags were i would say a hit because i sold one of them <laughs> i did make a set of pokeball coasters as well but those didn't sell. And to be honest, I think the only coasters I have ever sold at a market were ones that I had discounted deeply. I think they were like four bucks, which is really cheap. So I don't think I'm gonna make coasters anymore. For whatever reason, I just can't sell them. People just don't care about them when they come to my booth. So no more coasters for me. Now I did make four of these cute little cat meow shrooms. They are little kitty mushrooms, super sweet. I did use some parfait chunky, so they're very fluffy and sweet. And I made four of them thinking that they were going to be a big hit and not a single one sold. So I don't know, maybe more will sell in October. I don't plan to make more of these. We'll see, but as of right now, the mushroom mushroom is super cute and I had fun making them, but nobody was really interested in these ones. Now I did make a dice bag that looked like a mimic and oh boy, people loved this mimic dice bag. So many people were looking at it. So many people were contemplating buying it. Somebody did eventually buy it. So I will be making more mimic stuff in the future, specifically this dice bag and other mimic related things. I feel like when it comes to that kind of nerdy RPG type of stuff, mimics are super in. People love the mimics. So I do plan to make more mimic things. And I think I wanna start making maybe some mimic artwork because they're just 
way cool, right? The little Oddish dice bag that I made, people loved. So many people picked it up, so many people wanted it, but nobody did buy it, which is interesting. It's gonna come with me to my October market. Hopefully it'll sell there. So I might make another one similar, or I'm thinking about making like a plant cozy that is like an Oddish shape because people love Oddish. He's super silly, super cute, and who knows, hopefully that'll sell in October. Another dice bag that I made that people loved was the Bulbasaur dice bag. I have a lot of thoughts on this pattern, good ones. And I'm saving that for a video that is coming out soon. So just be aware, I loved this pattern. I love this designer and I can't wait to sing their praises. But as far as the actual bag itself, people loved it. They thought it was so cute. Somebody did buy it and they were so happy they had been eyeing it all day. Like I said, at the time of this craft market, there was a Pokemon event going on. So a lot of people that were there really liked Pokemon. So it's no surprise that the Bulbasaur bag did sell. I will be making another one of these and I will be making so many more from this designer. They were just excellent. I did also sell a couple of Pokeballs. Now these were my own pattern. I just whipped up a Pokeball, super simple, super easy. But yeah, Pokemon event going on, Pokeball. Kids loved it. They were throwing it at each other. It was a hit. Another giant hit was the Pokemon starters. I did make a couple of these adorable Pokemon starters and I did make them in Parfait Chunky so they were super fluffy and they were much bigger than the picture shows because, you know, they were using the chunky weight. But people loved them. I will be making more of these. There is also an additional set that I have from this designer where they're like laying down. I will be making those. So once October rolls around, uh, hopefully my booth attracts a lot of the Pokemon lovers because there's going to be quite a few Pokemon offerings. So what did I like about my setup and all of my offerings? And what am I going to keep come October when I sell at my October fair. So crochet is very popular right now. There are so many fiber artists out there and there's going to be a lot, I think, I have a feeling at my October market. Now I think that's great. I say the more the merrier because guess what? My stuff is going to be completely different than those other fiber artist things and it's cool. No need to get upset if there's other fiber artists there because everyone has different stuff. But one thing that makes my booth and my brand stand out is I also do all of my artwork. So a huge focus going into the summertime is going to be, yes, continuing to make the Amis that I love to do and having these unique options that people really enjoy. But by also having my artwork there, I can attract a lot of other customers as well. Not just the ones interested in the Amigurumi and the plushies, but people that are looking for stickers and notebooks and artwork and keychains and things. And I always feel like my amigurumi has kind of taken center stage at my markets, but I would really like my artwork to have just as equal of an impact when it comes to my space and my booth. So I'm going to be definitely working hard to have a lot more options when it comes to stickers, notebooks, prints, and other artwork related items. But what is something that I learned and want to change when it comes to October? Well, so my brain doesn't like to do the same amigurumi over and over. So what happens is I have a bunch of amigurumi to sell, but it's just a hodgepodge of a whole bunch of different things. Now I'm not saying I'm gonna go ahead and stop doing that and just make the same things over and over. That's not going to be fun for me. That's not why I create amigurumi. But I think what I want to do in October is I want to definitely organize them and categorize them more specifically. So I'll have a section of just Halloween ones. Then I'll have a section of just the foodie ones that I like to do. And then I'll have a section of like Pokemon and other kind of fandoms and characters and things that people will recognize kind of all in one area. So rather than have just a hodgepodge of Amis just spread out on the table, making it a little overwhelming for people, there's going to be a lot of Amis. There's no denying that. And they're all going to be different because that's just how I am. That is how I make. But 
I think if I can categorize them on my table differently and more specifically, it's going to be overall more aesthetically pleasing to people that do come up to my booth. All in all, I had a week and a half to prepare for this craft market and I was so happy I did it. I had so much fun. I met some wonderful local makers and I just love to see the smiles that some of my Amis bring to people. Sure, making money, all of that stuff, that's cool. I like doing it, but that's not why I crochet. I crochet because I truly love it. It is truly my number one hobby. And again, I just love to see the joy that it brings everybody. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's my favorite part. So thank you so much for joining me on this craft market vlog. I know it was kind of crazy and all over the place. I've never done one of these before. So I think I learned a little bit of how I want to do my next one, but yeah, thank you so much for being here. I lobby you so much. You are so wonderful. And I will see you all a little later. Bye.